It's been about two months since we received the final DLC character for Smash Ultimate's first Fighter's Pass. Byleth's initial reveal sparked some controversy in the community because it's another Fire Emblem character which people really did not like. However, a lot of top players, they just said, screw it, we're going to go right into it and just learn how this character works and play the character. First impressions of Byleth were quite varied. A lot of people thought he was a really good character, such as Zero, who actually thought Byleth was high tier, but a lot of people thought the character was literally unviable. Byleth really is a mixed bag of strengths and weaknesses. His immense range and power is countered by his slow movement and frame data, perhaps justifying most early impressions either way. Fortunately for Byleth, MKLeo found the character very fun and began using him often in friendlies. This evolved into Leo using Byleth to win a local at his home in Mexico, defeating skilled players such as Javi in the process. Even for Leo, who solidified himself as the best player in the world, winning a local in a very strong region is most likely not something he could achieve with a low tier character, and this drew some attention to Byleth in the meta. This wouldn't be Byleth's biggest win for long though. After making an insane loser's run, which is somehow the norm for him, MKLeo found himself in Grand Finals of Frostbite 2020 against fellow Mexican countryman Meister. After a swift 3-0 in the first set with his Joker, Leo continued to sweep the next two games against Meister's Game & Watch. Finding himself one game away from winning the tournament, Leo decided to choose Byleth, which surprised the crowd. Surely this isn't a mean pick, we thought, as Leo had a comfortable set lead and his friends with Meister, but it was so much more. Leo's Byleth took Game 3 with a dominant two-stock victory, winning one of the largest Smash Bros tournaments ever with the new DLC character that many considered to be a low tier. But of course, our question of the day. What are your thoughts on Byleth at this point in the meta? Let us know in the comments and stay tuned as we break down everything Leo did to defeat the sixth best player in the world with this distance demon. But as a heads up, if you want to check out our Byleth guide, you can go to ProGuides.com where we have guides for literally every single character that you could dream of, including Pro Guides from the awesome top player, MKLeo. If you're looking for a coach, you can get one anytime with our Play With Pros feature. So log on now. Hey. <laughs> Leo starts the game mixing up between retreating fairs and bears, and moving in with nares. Balancing these two options correctly actually sums up the core of Byleth's neutral at top level. His forward and back airs have extremely long horizontal range, making them excellent zoning tools. The weakness of spacing these two often comes from Byleth's necessity to use them as falling aerials. A rising fair or bear won't reliably hit a grounded opponent, and will be very unsafe to throw out. This means that Byleth will typically use these moves right before landing, so they can hit grounded characters safely. Unfortunately, doing this leaves him wide open as he ascends before swinging the aerial, and good players will take advantage of this using their best anti-aerial tools. We can see Meister looking for rising nares and back airs to accomplish this. Before we even get into Byleth's nair, there's another layer to the fair and back air spacing that allows Leo to find the juicy tipper back air on Meister. We mentioned that Leo is mostly looking for retreating fairs and bears, and there's a pretty subtle high level strategy going on here. He isn't just constantly retreating in general. That would give up all his positioning and make his neutral more obvious. Instead, you'll notice that Leo is often moving forward before going for a retreating aerial. Moving close to the opponent baits them into undershooting, which in layman's terms just means that Meister sees Leo there and wants to hit him, so he aims there where Leo is. When Meister takes the bait, Leo has set him up perfectly for a retreating back air. Now we can move on to the nares. Unlike bear and fair which are mostly used as falling aerials in neutral, nair is a multi-hit move, which makes it great to use rising. This is because the hitboxes will remain active until right before Byleth lands, unlike a back air or forward air which are only active for a short time and leave lots of aerial downtime either before or after swing. Approaching with nares naturally counters most anti-aerial strategies that the opponent is probably fishing for to beat falling bears and fares, and since they're done moving forward, they simultaneously create another undershoot bait as we mentioned earlier. Nair isn't just a great mix-up in neutral though, it's actually one of Byleth's best low percent combo starters. If fast fall properly, Nair can combo into Eftel at very early percents and dash attack in a large window thereafter. We also see Leo approaching with down tilts. This move is another great combo starter, and Leo uses it once he's conditioned Meister to stay on the ground. It's safe on shield at max range, so Meister can't punish with his infamous up B out of shield. Instead, Meister attempts to punish Leo's whiff down tilt with Nair, which Leo is able to punish as a Nair crosses up his shield. These whiff down tilts may be an intentional bait from Leo in situations where he expected Meister to retreat as he gained big punishes on Meister's Nairs, first with the Nair of his own and next up with up B out of shield. At frame 11, Byleth's up B out of shield is an excellent punish against cross-ups in particular. Typically, the appeal of a cross-up is to move behind a shield to land where the defending character cannot grab you, but against fast out of shield options that hit both sides, this strategy falls apart. Byleth's up B will grab the opponent and launch both characters into the air, where Byleth can attempt to follow up based on the opponent's DI. In this scenario, Leo is able to find the tipper back air, sending Meister off stage. 
Most of these trends continue for the remainder of the first stock, as Meister continues to nair Leo's shield and gets punished, and Leo again finds a punish on Meister's undershot approach with the retreating back air to close out the stock. Meister takes advantage of his respawn iframes to get Leo off stage, but as soon as he finds his way back, Leo turns up the heat. Leo often starts off slowly, then more methodically, gradually learning his opponent's habits and patterns. Once he feels comfortable, he'll start taking more risks and go for reads. As commentator Max Ketchum once said, speed running your stock. We see this in plain view as Leo calls out Meister's up B with an up B of his own and proceeds to stay right on top of him as the stock continues. He again uses Nairs to thwart Meister's approaches and punish attempts, this time when Meister is cornered and can't retreat. Next, Leo will take advantage of Byleth's up air to juggle Game Watch. Although we do see it fail in the next interaction, Byleth's up air is quite disjointed and can even beat Game Watch's down air from below. This is very valuable to the matchup, as coupled with Byleth's many other disjoints, it allows him to pressure Game Watch's usually amazing disadvantage state. When Leo does get hit by Meister's down air, you'll notice that he drifts away from Meister and recovers off stage. Perhaps Byleth's greatest struggle is landing, as he has incredibly slow aerial mobility, a short double jump, and mediocre hitboxes for landing besides an air, which is predictable. From a position above the ledge, however, Byleth has many ways to mix up his recovery and will have a much easier time escaping disadvantage to the ledge than trying to land above Game & Watch's set of wacky juggling hitboxes. Now Meister begins adapting to Leo's strats, switching to more grounded play of shields and grabs. It's here that Leo winds up offstage yet again and manages to avoid three edge guard attempts from Meister. Byleth's recovery is great when it comes to speed and distance, but once the tether grabs the ledge, he'll have no hitbox to defend himself. With Game & Watch's superior edge guarding, there are plenty of ways for this to go really bad for Leo, but he stays patient and carefully drifts around Meister's attempts and a beast of the ledge safely. Leo's offstage play was crucial in this game as he managed to take minimal damage from, and more importantly, survive every one of Meister's edge guard opportunities. Leo's tricky movement and mix-ups once again lead to a stock with a tipper back air, this time punishing Meister's spot dodge after a whiffed fair approach. Shortly after, Meister finds a parry on Leo's nair to finally take his first stock with an F-tool. Leo had been landing with falling nairs a lot in the past few situations, probably because its multiple hits and tricky landing hitbox make it difficult to punish. Meister chases Leo neutral more closely now, using more overshoots and attempting to give him little breathing room. He can only keep this up for so long, however, as Leo catches one of his approaches with Nair, again combining it into a dash attack bread and butter. This puts Meister off stage, where Leo never challenges Game & Watch in the matchup. Instead, he waits at roll distance near the ledge, taking advantage of Byleth's range to react and cover options. In this scenario, Leo uses an upbeat to punish Meister's ledge jump and combos it into a brutal down air for lots of damage. For the rest of the game, MKLeo carefully spaces more fares and bears, which Meister must respect as he grows increasingly closer to kill percent. His fantastic movement utilization continues to offer him retreating aerial spacing without giving up stage control, as he always makes sure to move back at least to center stage before retreating. Leo also goes for a risky mix-up, rushing towards Meister with an immediate dash attack instead of retreating, likely having conditioned Meister to overshoot here. This dash attack puts Meister off stage, where Leo waits and punishes his ledge option with Byleth's rather massive forward tilt for the victory. So in review, the majority of Leo's success came from his neutral play. For any player, mixing up between Byleth's falling back air and fair and his rising nares seems essential in neutral. You want to keep your opponent unsure of whether they should rush towards you or play slower and more defensive. As Leo demonstrated, using movement baits is so important to achieve this. He paid very close attention to when Meister approached, using more nares and shield to counter this, and when Meister retreated, he was able to push forward to a position where Meister felt he could attack, only to lose out to retreating back airs or out of shield punishes from Leo's Byleth. As Byleth struggles very much with landing, we can also see Leo opt to drift off stage instead, minimizing Byleth's weakness and disadvantage. Will this be the only time we see Leo's Byleth in major tournaments, or is it the first of many? Well, there's no way to know for sure. But Leo did say in an interview with me that he was eager to try Byleth against Prodigy's Mario, who sent him the loser's bracket at Frostbite. He explained that he doesn't feel Mario is equipped to deal with Byleth's range, so it's possible that Leo may be sticking with the character as a rare counterpick. We're excited to see more from MKLeo's Byleth in the future. And if you're excited to see more from Pro Guides, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you'll never miss another upload.